Every year, 3D printing becomes cheaper and more accessible to anyone who wants to get into it. But the problem is, is that there are hundreds of 3D printers out there. There's different styles of printing. There's different filaments and things to print with. Why are there so many? So, how do you start? Where do you start? Well, let's talk about it. I'll show you how I believe you should start in 2023. So like I was saying, in the world of 3D printing, there are hundreds of 3D printers out there that use different kinds of materials and that do a ton of different things and they all do them a little bit different from each other, right? That's why there's so many. Today we're going to focus mainly on what's called an FDM printer. An FDM printer is probably the most standard printer that you're going to see when it comes to printing. It uses filament which is a spool of basically plastic or PLA uh, that it melts down into a nozzle and it puts down on a plate. FDM printers are generally considered the best starting printer, but that kind of depends on what you want to print, what you want to do. Next week, I'm going to do another video and that is going to focus specifically on the other kind of printer out there that most people get into and that is resin printing. But for today, we're going to Today we're going to stick to FDM and what I love about FDM. And first thing I want to mention is that FDM is great for printing big. Bigger is better. If you want to print anything big, chances are you're going to use an FDM printer. And that's just because if you did it on anything else, it would cost you a small fortune. So FDM is great for building big. But what do you build? How do you build it? What do you build it with? Well, let's talk about it. When you print with an FDM printer, it uses filament. And filament comes in many sizes, many shapes, different materials, different things. The most common you're gonna see are gonna be PLA or PLA plus, which is just your generic standard, you know, plastic. Uh, you can also print an ABS. ABS is a very strong, sturdy material. If you're looking to print parts, You'll probably want to buy ABS. It's more expensive, but it makes sense, right? You're going to get stronger, more durable things out of a ABS. There's also TPU, which comes out as really flexible. If you've ever seen people 3D print, you know, boots or things like that, rubbery material, TPU is very flexible. And there's a ton of others. And they all print a little different and they all have different requirements that's needed to print with them. But the cool thing about filament is that you can buy it in rolls and those rolls can range from 200 grams to 2000 you know and you can get these big rolls and you can print off whatever you want with them you know originally when i, I wanted to get into 3d printing i was intrigued by the idea of 3d printing your own 3d printer you know and there's been a lot of people out there that have tried it and some have succeeded in making you know most of a 3d printer out of 3d printed parts obviously there's motors and things like that that have to be added into them as well but you can 3d print just about anything and the material you want to make it out of you can buy you can you can find online as easy it's a couple clicks away on amazon if you want to make chain mail you know if you want to make parts if you want to build clamps things like that you can print it yourself. I, I loved the idea of being able to print whatever I wanted. I have pieces of 3D printed objects that are in my fridge that help me with my fridge, that help me with my camera setup, that help me hold up lights. 3D printing is awesome. And you're only limited by your imagination. Now, once you know what you want to print with, you got to decide what you want to print. There's a few different options. You can go to Thingiverse, you can go to Thangs. You can type in whatever you're looking for online and just see what pops up. Or you can make your own object. If you're trying to make some custom piece, learn how to 3D model, download a program like Blender, and you can learn how to use it. And if you don't know what Blender is, 
check out one of my other videos. I'll put it up here in the comments and or over there. I don't remember what side it goes on. But you'll be able to learn what Blender is and kind of get a head start on making your own pieces. But the easiest route is to go to Thingiverse and type in what you want. Now me, when I got into 3D printing, I got into 3D printing to help with my Dungeons and Dragons experience. Nerd alert! I wanted to print a dungeon. I wanted to have characters to move through the dungeons like little game pieces. And I wanted to build and have inns and different things like that. And so I went to Thingiverse because it's got all of that and it's free. So you just need to find the file that you want, download it there, and then you gotta put it into your slicer. So slicing, what is a slicer? Depending on the printer that you bought, each printing company has a preferred slicer that they use. I first purchased an Elegoo Neptune 2 as my starting printer, and they, they preferred to use Cura, and so I've used Cura slicer the most, but I've also used Prusa. So there's different slicers out there. Honestly, to start out with, I would go with whatever slicer the company your printer told you to use. Because generally they'll have profiles, which is just a custom settings for that slicer on how to slice things. And generally they'll work the best for your printer. So go to your printer website. Usually they'll have drivers. A lot of the times they'll have profile settings and use those. But what a slicer is, is it's a program that slices whatever you want to 3D print into layers. It slices, it dices. You know, everything that you print, that's how it works. The nozzle puts it down in one layer and then it goes up to the next layer and puts it down and the next and the next and the next. And you get to see the breakdown of that in the slicer. You know, if your house that you're going to print has 1500 layers, you can look at every single one of those layers in the slicer. The slicer also allows you to change things that will change depending on the filament that you use. Now, like I said, if you use ABS, generally you gotta print a lot hotter than you would with PLA. And so the slicer allows you to change what temperature you print at. It allows you to change how fast you print. And probably the most important thing that the slicer does is it allows you to attach supports to whatever it is you want to print. And what I mean by that is a lot of the stuff that you're going to print will have things that are just kind of hanging out in the air. And what I mean by that is with this helmet, it's a perfect example. Yeah, the, the edges of it would sit flat on your build plate, but there are these pieces that go downward that there's nothing below them. And a printer can't just print in midair so what do you do? You print supports. And a support is exactly that. It supports whatever it is that you're printing. And so what it'll do is it'll use the minimum amount of filament that it can to build a leg up to whatever those pieces are. That way, when your printer gets to those pieces, instead of just printing in midair, it now has a platform, a support that you have built to put the piece on. So that way, everything comes out looking the way it's supposed to. It doesn't print out with giant chunks missing like it would. And so the slicer is going to be your best friend. Learn how to use it. They have advanced options. They have less options. And if you want to know more about all of those options, let me know. I'll put together a video. I'll go over all 200 or whatever options are in there, and I'll tell you exactly what they do. Just let me know. And I'd be happy to do that. But slicers, get used to learning how to use them because if you want a 3D print, you have to use them. Regardless of the printer that you buy, you'll have to learn how to slice. Now, once you have sliced your file and saved it, it's time to send it to the printer. Newer printers will allow you to do that just over the Wi-Fi. Uh, older printers, you'll probably have to put it on a small flash drive and just insert that in the front of the printer and start your printing. Now, something to kind of keep in mind with the printing is that you want to stick around for that first layer. You're going to want to watch that everything is going okay as often as you can. Sometimes you're not going to be able to. And some printers, they let you, you know, watch them on your phone and watch it that way. But any way that you can, you're going to want to make sure that that first layer goes down good. And if the first layer goes down and it's perfect, then you're probably in pretty good hands and you're okay to leave your printer. My printer's out in my garage. And so I make sure that first layer goes down and then I don't see it until the morning. 
you know, or hours later when I come back out to check it. And I have never had issues. Now, have I had prints fail? Yeah, of course they fail, especially if your build plate isn't level. So make sure before printing that that build plate is level. And what I mean by that is a lot of the newer printers have auto bed leveling. Some of them don't. Um, either way, you're going to want to make sure that your bed is as flat as possible. So go ahead, get a piece of paper. Um, your printer will have leveling options. Go ahead and get into those and move that around. And that piece of paper, what you want to do is you want to stick it underneath the nozzle. And when the nozzle touches the build plate, you want to be able to move that piece of paper. Not freely. You want it to be able to grip that paper a little bit. You'll feel it. It's almost like someone's putting their finger down on top of it lightly. And so it has a little bit of pull, a little bit of weight behind it. And you just go around and make sure that that's where the, the build plate is on all the positions that your printer has set up. And then you start printing. And before you know it, you'll have a printed object. Now, Big thing to say before you pull that off the build plate is generally you're going to always want to wait until your build plate is nice and cool. Once the build plate's cool, the print will come off easier and you won't damage your build plate. Uh, the first build plate on my printer I had to replace because I was pulling stuff off when it was hot because I was so anxious to print out more and more and more. And uh, I ended up destroying my build plate. The build plate itself fell apart. And uh, I was pulling prints off and then they were bringing with them pieces of the build plate. So make sure you wait till it cools down before you do that. But with that being said, that's about all you need to know to start printing. This is my latest project. As you can see, it's come in multiple pieces. And so a lot of the bigger things you're going to have to do, you're going to have to print them in little pieces. And when you have overhangs and things like this, you're going to have to add supports to them now support settings vary a ton depending on what you want to build there's different types of support settings and things like that play around with them some people love tree supports i have never been able to get tree supports to work the way that i want but i'm also printing things that are very small and tree supports are kind of hard to do on very small things and so i use zigzag supports and these are all in that slicer that we talked about before. But uh, you can support as much as you want or as little as you want. If you want to try something without supports, go ahead and try it. If you're nervous that it's going to fail, add some supports. Heck, add a lot of supports if you want it to be sturdy and strong. These are just those things that you'll kind of have to learn as you go about. But in all honesty, the supports shouldn't be a nightmare to remove. If they are you're gonna to wanna to change your settings a little bit. And again, I can go through those settings if that's something that people wanna see. But for the most part, I stick to the defaults that the printer gives me, especially if it's one that you downloaded from the provider of your printer. They go through, they do a lot of that work and you'll just check that support box and start printing and see what happens. And most of the time, it'll work out. And with just that little bit of knowledge with these 3D printers, you'll be able to print anything from trees to houses to giant worms to fight your D&D &D party or guns to take the Comic-Con. Whatever you want to do, you'll be able to print. And that's what I've always loved about 3D printing. That's what I've always loved about this hobby in general is that you can you get out of it what you put into it, literally. You know, if you put in enough filament, you can get just about anything. And if you put a little time into it, it's pretty simple. Now, is there a lot that goes into learning this hobby? Only if you are trying to do very specific things. For the most part, you can print stuff out and it's gonna look okay. Now, if you want it to look perfect, perfection, it's gonna require a little more work. If you want it to look absolutely stunning and amazing, those layer lines to be as close as they possibly can, yeah, you're gonna have to put a lot of work into them. But if you want something that looks good when it's painted, goes on your table nicely it's not that hard you like i said you take the printer out of the box and you print a benchy and that benchy that's what everything you're going to print is going to look like as long as you don't mess with any of the settings and if you're okay with that print away i probably went through four or five spools of filament before i changed any settings on my printer 
just because that's what I wanted and it was printing everything good enough. And I loved it. So I hope that you will too. And as always, you know, if you like the content that we're putting out, we're going to put out more. Like I said, next week video, we'll be going over the same thing, but with a resin printer instead and kind of talking about the differences there. And so if you want to like, subscribe, follow the channel and stay tuned for next week's video here at Pulsegate Games. We're all about helping you make your tabletop experience better. And as always, don't spend so much time building your world or 3D printing your world that you forget to spend some time in it. Till next time.